It was the scariest, um, most difficult, confusing, exciting, most wonderful day of my life. I mean, <laughs> I mean, when you when you realize that God is allowing you to be a father, I, I don't I don't know what to compare that to, you know. And then, on top of that, when you when it, when it seems that he's deemed you fit to be the stepfather to his son, that's, that's overwhelming. Um, he's a he's perfectly healthy, happy baby boy that um, came into the world, I guess, just like most every other kid. You know, um, I, I get why they call it labor. <laughs> I, I mean, since I was 12, I've worked every day of my life, but I, I've never worked as hard as Mary worked that night. She was, she was amazing. And then not just that night, I mean, through all of it, through, through the months of people talking about us behind our back and, um, the week-long journey to Bethlehem. And then, and then we get there, and she 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 takes an ordinary feeding trough and uh, and turns it into a cradle. And none of it seemed to phase her. She's amazing. You know what, through through all of it, I never heard her once ask why. Why? You know, she just, she just did everything God asked her to do. And if she didn't understand why things happened, she knew God was in control. She just, she, she, she followed his will. I, I get, I get it. Man, I get why God chose her. I really do. What I don't understand is why he chose me. In Psalms, Chapter 18, verse 2, it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. So we're going to start off today asking a question. The question is, is who, is your, who is your defender? Who is your defender this morning? Because it seems that we live in a world where we are constantly defending ourselves. <laughs> we defend our actions. We defend our past. We defend our mood. We defend our motives. We defend our anger. We defend our unforgiveness. We defend our worthiness. We are defensive. We defend ourselves to our wives. We defend ourselves to our husbands. We defend ourselves to our children and to our parents. We defend ourselves to our employers, our teachers, and our leaders. We defend ourselves to Mr. Police Officer. Oh, I didn't know it was only 35. We defend ourselves to our pastor, and this pastor defends himself to his flock. We are so concerned about how we are perceived, what people think. We defend ourselves about being so defensive. After all, <clears throat> this is the weight that we carry. And I believe we were never intended to carry this burden of being our defense, of justifying who we are and why we are. The result, this is all because of sin. I mean, after all, the very first time we ever see humanity defending themselves, it's when Adam said, 
Well, it's the woman that you gave me. I believe there's a place in God. I believe that there's a place in God where we become so God-minded, we become so God-minded that we lose all defense of ourselves. And when we stop defending ourselves, God is able to become our defense. He's able to become our defender. He's able to become our deliverer. And that's exactly where Joseph and Mary found themselves. They found a place that, for many of us, we would think we'd have to defend. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace, disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. There's some things in here that we don't understand in our day and age. And the first thing is betrothed. When's the last time you said, I'm betrothed? When did, you, when did you use that word last? But what betrothed was, it was, a, it was just as binding as actual marriage. It was a commitment. It was a covenant. You made a promise to wed, to be husband and wife. And it actually, a betrothal could only be stopped or broken up by divorce. So they have a covenant. Joseph and Mary had a covenant or a promise or of a commitment, but they had not had a marriage ceremony yet. And they have not come together and known one another, biblically. Adam and knew his wife Eve, and they begot a son. That's what sexual relations. They hadn't had sexual relations yet. You understand? This is interesting. You know that marriage is a covenant, right? Marriage is a covenant. And you come together as a covenant. And almost all covenants in the Bible come together by the shedding of blood. Women have a skin called the hymen. They have no clue what it's for. But when she comes together as one, as husband and wife, with their, in the marriage covenant, it breaks and blood flows. Tell me there is no God. It's amazing. Joseph and Mary were living God's way. They were living God's way. They trusted that God's way was the best way. And because they were faithful to God, they were able to be used by God. Do you realize this? In this day and age, how many young teenage couples would be able to be used by God to have a virgin birth? See, when you live life the way God intends your life, he can do miraculous things through you. They weren't disqualified. Why weren't they disqualified? Because they were living according to God's ways. See, they understood something. They understood that God's ways are the best way to live, that God only wants good for them. So if he asks them to do something, it's for their good. It's their good. And parents, grandparents, if you're not talking to your kids about godly sexual relationships, to abstain, I, I, it just boggles my mind how I hear Christians say, well, there's nothing you can do. It's just all hormones. That's a lie. 
you got to teach them why it's important, why it's God's way is the best way. And some of you think, well, I can't say nothing about that to my kids. I mean, because, you know, I'd be a hypocrite because I, I, I screwed up. I didn't wait till I got married. Well, have you ever left the house and not put your seatbelt on? But do you still tell your kids to put your seatbelt on? You hypocrite? No. Actually, you doing it the wrong way justifies, gives you the right to say, I did it the wrong way. This is why. This, this is what happened because of my mistakes. And this is why God's way is the best way. But they were living life God's way. They were living God's way, so God was able to do a miracle, birth a miracle in them because they walked in faith with God. So often, when we fail to believe God's way is the best way, it keeps God's blessing from manifesting in our lives. You understand that? It's not that God doesn't want his blessing to manifest in your life, but when we refuse God, because when you don't do things God's way, that's refusing God. Do you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Right? Parents, you know, when your kids refuse to listen to your advice, they're refusing you. It actually can disqualify us from being used by God. God doesn't disqualify us. We disqualify ourselves. If Joseph and Mary said, hey, we're betrothed. There ain't nothing wrong. A little hanky-panky. They still use that word, hanky-panky? Huh? <laughs> Amanda uses it. What? Um. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> they could have... <laughs> right? Hey, we're betrothed. We're in a... We're covenant. We're getting married. It's good as good as done. Ain't nothing wrong with a little hanky panky. I mean, they could have defended their actions, but Mary would not have been qualified to be used to bring Jesus into the world. <laughs> it's not that God didn't want to use her, but her, but but her lack of faith in God's way disqualified her from being usable. And Joseph would not have been able to be the stepfather because he would uh, be a righteous man, the son of God Almighty. He had been the stepfather to the son of God Almighty. That's amazing to think. Now, don't get me wrong. God can redeem your past. God does redeem your past. And he can make us usable in Jesus Christ. Though your sins were as red as scarlet, I have made them as white as wool. But this is something that we have to learn to do day in and day out. Is to align our steps with the Lord. To make our decisions according to the Lord. So that we can be usable to be, to be the hands, the feet, the miracle in the world. Do you know most of the time, the reason why you lack faith is not because you don't trust God. It's because you don't trust you. I can't pray for this person because I knew what I did. I did this, this, and this. Who disqualified you? God? No, you did. You said you were unusable. God can redeem us from our past, but that's not his best. He didn't desire, desire for you to go into that heartache. He didn't desire for you to have brokenness and hurt. He didn't, he didn't desire you to create soul ties and, 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 and have the burden and memories. and oh. <laughs> Then it says that Joseph... Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. 
That means that he planned to put her away, to divorce her. Joseph was a godly man. Joseph was a man that trusted God. Joseph was a man that did things God's way. Joseph was a man that kept his body in subjection. And because Joseph was this way, he, he picked a woman that was the same way. He put, picked a woman that was the same way. And according to the law, according to the law, Joseph could have had Mary put to death. He could have had her stoned for being unfaithful, for committing adultery. Not only was he not going to have her put to death, he, was going, he wasn't going to shame her publicly. Think about this. Think about this. This shows that how, how unself-centered Joseph was. It wasn't, he wasn't concerned about himself. He wasn't concerned about defending his reputation. He, 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 he thought about these things. He thought that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, there's no way that I'm going to have her stoned to death. And I don't want to disgrace her either. So if you, maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll just divorce her secretly. And I'll just put her, just let it kind of go, go away. Joseph was a man full of grace and mercy. <laughs> he wasn't concerned about defending himself. He, he, was, he, he, he didn't become bitter. How many of us men would be bitter? He didn't think of just about himself in this situation, but he considered Mary. He did not make a knee-jerk reaction. He wasn't controlled by raw emotion or even logic. In verse 19, it says, And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, this wasn't a knee-jerk reaction. This wasn't something he just said because he got angry and mad. He was considering his options. He was considering what he should do. Proverbs 4.26 says, watch the path of your feet. In other words, consider your path, the path of your feet, and all your ways will be established. My goodness. How often do we consider the path of our feet? Consider the choices that we make. I mean, you guys have never made a rash decision before. I know that. But have you? <laughs> have you made a decision based completely on emotion? Have you written people out of your life just of an emotional reaction to something they did? Have you ever said something that was birthed out of the emotion of the moment? How'd that work for you? It's kind of quiet, so I don't think very good. How about logic? <laughs> See, this is where it gets even a little bit more difficult. Well, you make a logical decision, right? Logic says this is the best decision. And you make this logical decision, and it still ended up being the wrong decision. You know, he could have logically went to the book of the law. He could have logically justified his actions. But would have been the right decision. We, as spirit-filled believers, are not led by our emotions. We're not even to be led by, our, by logic. We are to be 
led by the Spirit. We are to consider, we are to consider our ways. We are to be Spirit-led people. Joseph wasn't even born again, and he's led better than most. Joseph took great care in making this decision. He was not controlled by emotion or just logic, but he considered, he thought, he meditated on, he prayed about what he should do. How many decisions have you made without hearing from God? It's interesting, you you hear even people that say, well, you know, I did it my way. I didn't didn't ask God what I should do with my life, and I turned out pretty good. You fool. You think your life is good? You should have seen if God had all of it. We make decisions without hearing God. How many times have you made a major life choice without hearing what he would have you do? Let's look at verse 18 again. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found. That, that became together there. That's hanky panky. Um, she, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. She was found. It was discovered. Mary, Mary was discovered to be pregnant. <laughs> what you got to understand is if you look at Luke's account, Ma- Matthew's account is kind of from Joseph's perspective. Luke's account's from Mary's perspective. In Luke's account, in verse 39 of chapter 1, it says, he, it tells us that after the visitation of the angel Gabriel, Mary left and went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who had become pregnant in old age with John the Baptist. So Mary wasn't around for a while. I mean, how would Mary defend herself? You know, sometimes you can get so far out with God that they're, what can I say? <laughs> See, most of the time when we're defending ourselves, it's when we're wrong. But, you know, you can get into a place with God where he, your circumstances look so crazy, and you're in, but you're right. <laughs> I mean, what would she say? You know, uh, an angel visited me. You know, this is the people that haven't heard from God in 400 years. An angel visited me. I'm going to have the Messiah. And guess what? It's a virgin birth. How would that work on you guys? Hmm? I never knew a man. See, Mary went and visited Elizabeth for three months, and when she came back, it was evident that she was pregnant. It was found that she was pregnant. She had a baby bump. She had a baby bump. She came back. What's this? A little too much hummus. (laughs) I don't know. But nowhere in Scripture do we ever see Mary Defending herself. She never defends herself. And I was sharing with the prayer team downstairs before the service, and, and, and I wasn't complaining on saying this, but it came to my remembrance, so you get it too. Even when Jesus was older, the Pharisees said to him, we weren't born in fornication. We know who our fathers are. Maybe that's why Jesus had so many prostitutes and women that were sinners that got delivered from demons. And and maybe that's why he, the woman at the well, maybe that's why he was so easily been able to have a relate to 
have a relationship and minister to him because he's seen the way his mother was treated. But she came back from Elizabeth after three months, and it was found that she was preg pregnant. And, and it just shows the great trust, the faith that Mary had in God. That she was committed to God. Mary trusted God. She trusted that God would be her defense and, if need be, her deliverer. How terrifying for a 15 to 17 year old girl in the culture that she grew up in. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, it says, But when he had considered this, talking about Joseph, when he had considered this, see, he didn't just have a knee jerk reaction, he didn't try to defend himself, he didn't, he didn't. He, had, he didn't go to logic. He didn't, wasn't controlled by emotion. He was considering. He was meditating. He was praying on. He was seeking God on what he should do about this situation. And when you do that, God speaks. And he, while he was considering this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph. And you're thinking, man, I wish that the angel of the Lord would show it to me once in a while. Well, maybe you should consider once in a while. How long should you consider? Maybe until the angel shows up. Do you hear from heaven? Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you should call his name Jesus, for he will save his, peop their, his people from their sins. You know, Jesus was not Jesus' name in heaven. That's his earthly name. Yeshua. It's actually Joshua. The Lord is salvation. Verse 22. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Just think, just think, women, if you came back and you had a baby bump and you come back and everybody sees it and everybody knows and they're, they're, they're talking behind your back, they're talking all over, um, Joshua sees, sees Mary and he just turns around and wa walks away to hide his tears. Just think, just think if she tried to defend herself. Just think if she tried to put these, these ideas into Joseph's mind that, that an angel came and it's a virgin birth and, and he's going to be the Messiah. I mean, when Joseph had this dream, he could have just said, that woman, that woman is even in my dream. She's messing with my head. I can't even sleep the nonsense. Right? You could write it off. But Mary trusted God to be her defense. She trusted God in the midst of fear that she could be killed and stoned to death, that she could be left and abandoned, that she could be divorced and separated and rejected. See, Joseph had to believe the word of God by faith. And when he believed, when he heard the word of God, when he had the vision, when he had the dream from the angel of the Lord, he had to believe it by faith. And he says, it says that he, that he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He put action to what, the, what God had told him. 
He believed it with all his heart. And he received it by faith. And when he went and talked to Mary, all she did was confirm what the Lord had already said to Joseph. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Joseph running into Mary? She, he gets up from this dream and he, he runs to Mary. And he runs into Mary with tears in his eyes and says, Mary, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The Lord, I had a dream. The angel of the Lord visited me and I had a dream and, and, and that you weren't unfaithful, that this is from the Holy Spirit, you, that this is a virgin birth and that you're going to have the Messiah. And Mary goes, yes, and his name will be Jesus. He goes, that's right. It's going to be Jesus. When we fail to trust God, when we fail to trust God in our life, when we become our defender in our defense, we hinder what God wants to do in our lives. Can I have the worship team come up? Joseph and Mary had the concern of being rejected by each other. They had the concern about being rejected from their families, friends. They had a concern of being kicked out of the synagogue or the temple or the church. That they would be labeled social outcasts. They would be, have the title of sinners and unclean. Like I said, the religious leaders mock Jesus and says, we weren't born in fornication. We know who our father was. But they trusted God. They trusted God to be their defender. They cast their cares upon him knowing that he cared for them. They put their faith into the, to the words spoken over their lives and trusted that he was able to bring all things together for good, even in the most crazy of circumstances. We started this message with Psalms 18.2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Let's stand. Is God your defender? Is God your defender this morning? Is God, is God your resting place. Are you resting in God? Are you constantly on edge defer, de, defending your circumstances, defending your life, trying to justify? Are you living a life of fear, anxiety, and stress? Do you have an unhealthy concern of what people think of you? Are you constantly defensive? God wants you to deliver you from this burdensome way of living. He wants you to live a life that is light and free. He wants you to know him as your defender. Trusting him as your deliverer. You've been listening to a message from Karis New Testament Church. For more information or to contact us, go to www www.karisntc.org And remember, you are deeply loved, highly favored, and destined to reign in Christ Jesus.